Hi, this is Sebastian Katz from Audio Bro. What you just heard was our chain link fence instrument just as it loads out of the box. What I was doing was simply holding the F1 key to trigger this sequence, and at the same time, I was just randomly choosing some of our preset key effects. If you've watched our other videos, or have played with the library yourself, you likely know that these 12 key effects keys can change the sound of your performance in both subtle and drastic ways. Today, I'm going to be showing you the key effects setup page. This page makes it possible to wrap all the LAD engine functionality into 12 simple key effects notes that you can trigger from the keyboard. Now, of course, our patches all come preloaded with great key effects setup. So this video is designed for people who want to tweak our settings or create their own settings. But of course, you don't have to do any of this if you want to just pick up and play. Okay, let's see how this thing works. So fundamentally, the page is broken down into 12 rows that align with the 12 key effects notes. So while it may look like there's just a ton of menus here, it's really helpful if you just think about them in rows. So C0, and then all the controls for C0, C sharp 0, all the controls for C sharp 0, etc., etc. So it's just 12 copies of the same thing. Now let's go through what these things do. A lot of it is self-explanatory, but I'm going to go through it just so that it's really clear. First of all, you have the notes on the left-hand side. Now, these show you not only which key effect is currently loaded, meaning that if I start switching around, you'll see them change just as you change them in real time. They also can be pressed as buttons so that you can change the sound manually with the mouse. So for instance, if I start playing back of that same sequence we were hearing before, and I switch, so it's a great way to audition what these things sound like. So next, you have this little color control. And this control is actually a menu if you click on it, and it allows you to change the color of the keyboard for the key effects notes. So you see by default we have basically reversed out the colors. You have black keys instead of white keys and white keys instead of black keys. But if you'd prefer to customize the color some other way, you're certainly welcome to. You just can click on any of these and then choose a different color. You see we have reverse chosen by default, but maybe I want them to be cyan. And there you can see the key at the bottom of the screen change to cyan. This might also be a fun time to mention the link button. When the link button is turned on, it will mimic the action that you make on any control across all 12 keys. So if I want all these key effects keys to be cyan, instead of clicking one at a time, I can just turn on the link button and then click on cyan on any one of them. And you can see they all update and on the keyboard you can see the correct color as well. Okay, I'll set them back to reverse just because we think that that's a nice way to view these. And I'm going to turn link off. As we go on, I'll show you it again. Now from left to right, you have tuning, sequence, length, step filter, auto pan, and FX snap. Let's go through these one at a time. So what you'll see under this menu is a bunch of options. You'll see no change. You'll see presets one through five. You'll see bypass and unbypass, and this is pretty self-explanatory, but let me just show you all the same. So on the tuner, you'll see there are five presets and a bypass button. So when you assign this, for instance, if I assign this to preset three, and I go to the tuner page, and then I go down here and I trigger C0, sure enough, we loaded preset three. And that's pretty much how this entire page works. So no change is pretty obvious. It basically means when you press C, don't change whatever's in the tuning. I'll talk a little bit more about this no change option as we go on. And of course you have a bypass and an unbypass, which of course is just going to change the bypass state on the tuner, just like that. So without changing what's currently loaded, that will just turn it on and off. The next column over is the sequence column. Now this might be the most conceptually difficult one to understand, but it's still really pretty simple. The options you have here are again no change, and then preset A, B, C, and D. 
Now let me show you where these are. If you head over to the sequencer, so I'm going to click on this little radar screen or Pi to enter in the deep editor for the F1 that we've been working on. And of course you see the sequence data. And right smack in the middle, you've got A, B, C, and D. And this is what we're referring to exactly. So we can change between these different options from the key effects. And if you've watched the sequence editor video, you'll likely know that these can do uh, a bunch of things. They can change the start, length, and rate of the sequence, and they can also change the mute values of tracks. Um, so you actually have a lot of power here, meaning if you change from A to B, it's possible to start midway through this sequence at half speed and without a few of these instruments. And just to demonstrate really quickly how this works, again, I will make a change and I will go to preset D when I press the C key. So here we go. I'm going to go over to the sequencer so I can show you. I'm going to hold the F key down. Now I'm going to trigger the C key, and you're going to see what happens. And sure enough, we changed the sequence area that was playing back. And just for fun, let me show you what happens if I then change the rate to double time and save that into slot D, and I'll do the same thing again. So here we go. I'm holding the F key. And I'm going to go down here with my mouse just so you can see it and press the C key and listen to what happens. So really fun. Um, it lets you take these 128 step sequences and actually make them very malleable and uh, interesting to play with. So like I said, it may be conceptually a little harder to understand, but it's really the same thing. It's just loading presets that you've saved in the other pages. So let's talk about length. Length is actually a really fun control to play with as well. And the options are a little bit different here. At the top, you do see the familiar no change, meaning if we switch here, just don't touch what's already going on. And then you see 100% length down to 5% length in some intervals. And at the bottom, there's also a randomization option. Now this works just like adjusting the length slider on the main page or we're using CC83 by default. Um, what it does is it takes any mixer channels that have this length option turned on, this LN option turned on, and it just adjusts the length of the notes in real time. And this can be a really interesting effect. So let me show you an example. Okay, so we have a trash can playing back here. I'll turn it up just a bit for you. So you know that if you touch the length, you can get that sort of effect. And if you want to do that on a key effect key, it's just as simple as choosing some values. So maybe I want 30% of the length, make it nice and clicky sounding when I press this C0 key. So I'm going to head back over here to the sequencer so you can see, and I'm holding the note. And I'm going to turn the length up all the way, and I'm going to hold the note, so we have full length right now. And now when I click on this C key again, you should be able to hear the length get much shorter, and you can see this slider move to match. Here we go. The final option here is randomization. And this does exactly what you think it does. It randomizes these values. So each time you hit the C0 key, it's going to send a new value. And this is really easy to demonstrate as well. I'm going to hold that same pattern, and then I'm just going to hit C0 a few times. And this time, instead of hitting it from the keyboard, I'll just hit it here in the circle in the uh, wheel of sound. And again, you can watch this length slider. Okay, so you get the idea. 
You could also do the same thing by just hitting this C0 button over here repeatedly, and that will also flash this randomization control. It just basically sends the key switch again. So it's the same as hitting C0 on your keyboard or hitting C0 here. And they're always synced up, so if you change them here, you'll see it changes here as well. And if I change one from here, it will be the same here. Okay, so let me set the length back at 100% length. And next we're gonna talk about the step filter. So options should be very familiar, no change, table on and table off, presets one through five, and then randomization. So here we're talking about the presets that live in the filter tab. You can see five presets and you can change which preset gets loaded just by altering the value in this menu. And again, you have a randomization value which will alternate between these five presets. So if I turn that randomization on and we look here at the filter table, every time I press C, you'll see one of the different presets get loaded. Okay, so to hear this, let me turn the filters on for everybody. So I'm gonna start the sequence playing back. And every time I press this C0 key, it's going to randomly choose one of the five values to use. And this is just so that you can hear it. Here we go. So you get the idea. That's a fun control to play with. I should also say before we move on that uh, using these randomization values is really fun to audition with and actually is really fun also to just experiment with to find the sound. But if you want a very explicit value loaded, it's of course always uh, easier if you just load a specific preset for a key. It's much more predictable that way. Okay, so let me just turn this off. So let's talk about the auto panner. Uh, this is a simple one. There's either no change or you turn it on or off. This is basically an instrument-wide setting, meaning that what you apply here is going to apply to everything you hear, and it's the equivalent of going to the mixer and turning on this auto pan control. It's a very macro level control, but if you want to push the sound around in the stereo field, it can come in handy. So let me show you uh, turning it on and off. And in order to do this, I'm going to start making use of the C-sharp key as well. In fact, I'm going to just clear out the entire board here. And to do that, I'm going to hit this link button, and then I'm going to hit no change, no change, and you can see I'm just clearing out all the cells simultaneously. So now I have a blank slate, and I'm going to turn off the link button, and for Z0, I'm going to turn on the auto panner, and for C sharp 0, I'm going to turn off the auto panner. And here's what it sounds like. I'm gonna turn on the mixer so that you can see this auto pan button getting turned on and off. So what I'm gonna do here quickly is I'm gonna turn off the filters and the delays just to make it a little easier to hear. And here we go. So I'm gonna hold the key. And when I hit this C0 key, you're gonna see the auto panner turn on and you should hear, here we go. So you can hear the bounce in the stereo field. And then when I hit C-sharp, it's off. That's all there is to it. Not anything terribly complicated. Now, what you might be getting a sense of now is the fact that each one of these is sort of simple by itself, but when used in combination with all the varying effects, it can be enormously powerful. Like I said, these changes can be very subtle and specific, or very drastic, or even random. And the very last field here is potentially the most diverse and powerful, and that's the FX snap field. So I'm going to just turn these back to no change so that we're not hearing anything. And let's take a look at the options. So we have no change, we have snapshots one through eight, and we have random snapshot. And these, of course, as you might have guessed, pertain to the eight mix snapshots we have over here on the mixer. And if you've watched the Mixer page, you likely know that these basically store everything you see in the Mixer. So it's about, so close to a uh, hundred sound parameters for each one of these channel strips. So there's an enormous possibility of altering the sound here. 
everything from mic mix levels to loop mixes to sends pre and post fader and then of course all the parameters of our insert effects and this works very simply just as you'd imagine uh, in fact I'm going to quickly choose snapshots 1 through 8 and of course now when I start playing these black keys you can see the mix parameters changing in real time and of course we can play back So you get the idea. And there's a random option as well, which does exactly what you think it does. It just alternates between a random selection of the eight snapshots available. And that's really all there is to the page. The only control that we haven't talked about is the save menu, and that just allows you to save or load a configuration for this entire page, which can be fun to try uh, creating a configuration on one instrument and loading it on another and just seeing what happens. So before we go, let's just talk about a few tips for working with this page. The first thing I should mention is this no change option. It sounds kind of benign, but it actually can be very powerful when you think about it. The interesting thing about the no change option is that you don't necessarily always know where you're coming from. So if I set this C0 FX snap to no change, what this means is if I'm on the C sharp key switch and we're hearing snapshot two in the mixer and we change back to C zero, we're gonna still be hearing snapshot two, but of course our other options might change. However, if I'm on say E zero and we're listening to snapshot five and I switch back to C zero, we're still going to be on snapshot five, but the other options will change. So there is a measure of uncertainty to it. And there's sometimes when you're writing where you might want that, where you might want to be experimenting with different sounds and seeing what you might get. And that's really where the no change option can be fun. But if you want an extremely predictable sound, you want to avoid that kind of a setup. And if that's the case, it's usually better to put in explicit values for each key. An exception, of course, is if you have an entire column set to no change, in which case nothing is going to be altered anyway, so there's no concern there for uncertainty. Another fun option is to set these three parameters to random, the length, the step filter, and the effect snap, and then hold a sequence and play C0 repeatedly. And of course, each time, each one of these parameters is being randomized. And then maybe we find a sound that we like. We can go very simply and say, all right, so our length is about 90% or 100%. We're on the second step filter preset. And we're on the sixth FX snapshot. So we could then set the FX snapshot to six, the step filter preset to two, and the length to about 90%. And now we have C0 designed for the sound that we just heard that we just stumbled upon. So that can be a nice way to have some happy accidents. Finally, just a quick note about performance. The LAT engine is very optimized to make all these changes happen in real time. But if you're setting up your own key effects setups, you might question, if I have a column like this, where I have identical values, is it better to have all the values be 50%? or have all the values be no change? In other words, is there a difference in CPU overhead? And the answer is no, they're identical. The LAD engine is smart enough to know that when you're switching between identical values that it doesn't need to do anything. All right, so I hope this has been an interesting video for you guys and for the people who are tweakers out there, I think you're gonna find this page and LAD in general just a blast to play with. Uh, can't wait to hear your feedback and questions on our forums and thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.